Today I am going to talk about Kingdom Protoctista and Kingdom Fungi. Now I will talk about Kingdom Protoctista. I mentioned earlier that Kingdom Protoctista is also known as Protista and just like Monerans, they too are unicellular organisms. If they are unicellular organisms, then why are they not placed under monorans? Yes, they are not placed under monorans because they are eukaryotic cell. Eukaryotic means they contain the cell organelles and a well-defined nucleus in the cytoplasm. That is, they have membrane-bound organelles, mitochondria, lysosomes, Golgi apparatus, etc. They have a protoplasmic grade of organization. And just like monorans, these are also microscopic. They cannot be seen with a naked eye. Locomotion in these protoctistans is either by flagella or cilia or pseudopodia. And reproduction is either asexual or sexual. Just like the monorans, they too have a diversified nutritional mode. They can either be autotrophic or saprophytic or parasitic or they can be, they can feed on other organisms. Kingdom protista includes six phylum, phylum protozoa, phylum basiliophyta, which includes all the diatoms, phylum phaeophyta, which includes the brown algae, phylum chlorophyta, which includes chlorella, phylum rhodophyta, which includes red algae, phylum umycota, which includes phytophthora. Phylum protozoa is divided into four classes. Class Rhizopoda. Rhizopoda include all those organisms which move about with the help of pseudopodia. Example is amoeba. Class Flagellata. As the name suggests, flagella means whip like. So, this class includes all the organisms which move about with the help of flagella. Example is Euglida. Phylum protozoa also includes class ciliata. Ciliata, as the name suggests, moves about with the help of cilia. So, for example, paramecium. One of the examples that we are all aware of is plasmodium. And since they live in the body of the host and do not move about, they are grouped under group sporozoa. Here in the diagram, you can see three beautiful protozoans. Amoeba, paramecium, and flagella. And what difference do you see in all these three diagrams? You see that in the first one, that is amoeba, it is irregular in shape. And you can see the flowing extensions of the cytoplasm, which is nothing else but pseudopodia. So it belongs to the class rhizopoda and moves about with the help of pseudopodia. Pseudopodia also helps this animal in capturing the prey and forming a food vacuole where food is finally digested and given out into the cytoplasm and to carry on the various activities of life. The excretion in them is not required because they live in water, but they do have a osmoregulatory mechanism which is carried out by the contractile vacuole. Euglena has got a whip like flagella, the flagella that you saw in the case of the monorans, but there is a tremendous difference between the structure of the monorans and the eukaryotic flagella. So, both of them have flagella for movement, but the structure is different in both. Euglena are autotrophs and can manufacture their own food and as you can see in the diagram, they contain chloroplasts which contains chlorophyll which is required for the synthesis of their own food in the presence of sunlight. They have got a certain mouth unlike the amoeba where the food is taken up 
by forming a food vacuole with the help of pseudopodia. Here you find there is a mouth or a cytostome which leads into a gullet and then the food is pinched off into the body as food vacuole. Paramecium where the whole body is covered by cilia. So the movement here is brought about by these cilia. Also the difference between amoeba, euglena and paramecium is that paramecium contains two nuclei. One is the micronucleus and other is the macronucleus. The micronucleus is reproductive in nature whereas macronucleus is vegetative. Chlamydomonas has got flagella and it can also move about with the help of this flagella as you can see in the case of euglena that the nutrition in them is diversified as you find in the case of monorins and we have already talked about the different modes of nutrition. They can either be parasitic as I have said that the parasitic ones will live inside the body of the host. For example, is trypanosoma, leishmania and can cause diseases. Leishmania causes Kalazar, where the trypanosoma causes sleeping sickness in human beings. They can be autotrophs, for example, euglena, which can manufacture its own food with the help of chlorophyll. They can be saprophytic or they can be heterotrophs. Just like in the case of monorins, here also you will find that reproduction is either sexual or asexual. Asexual reproduction takes place by binary fission. So it is the nucleus which is first dividing followed by the cytoplasm. A constriction appears in the middle which deepens. That is a furrow appears in the middle as you can see in the diagram which further deepens and ultimately the two amoebae are formed. Sexual reproduction is also found in some of the protestants. For example, you find sexual reproduction in paramecium which is by conjugation. In case of paramecium, you will find that two paramecia, they come close together and a protoplasmic bridge is formed between the two as you can see in the diagram. Exchange of genetic material takes place through this protoplasmic bridge. Remember exchange that is from one paramecia genetic material would move to the other. It is not one going into the other, it is both ways. And further meiotic division etc takes place. So here you find that although sexual reproduction is taking place, it is different from the higher forms in that the two whole individuals are involved in reproduction. I would now talk about fungi. As I have already said that some of them may be macroscopic. Can you think of any macroscopic fungi? I am sure some of you must have. It is the mushroom. Why? Because some of us must be eating the mushrooms. But all mushrooms are not edible. Some of them are poisonous also. So we should be careful of what mushroom we are taking. So these mushrooms are macroscopic. Otherwise, the majority of the fungi are microscopic. They are filamentous in nature and are made up of hyphae. Except for yeast, which is oval in shape or round in shape, we can say. These hyphae are fine branching and they are usually colorless threads. Now, when these hyphae are joined together, or they form a cluster, then they are known as mycelium. Now, these mycelium, if they are in cluster, then why is it that we are not able to see them? Next time, when you go to the market, or when your mother brings mushroom, or those who don't eat the mushroom can go to the market, pick up one mushroom. The moment you turn the mushroom, you will be able to see these hyphae, or you will be able to see these mycelium. And therefore, because these hyphae are small in size, we are not able to see them. These hyphae are found hidden in food, they are hidden in soil, they are hidden in rotting wood. So what do we conclude from this? 
We conclude that they are found everywhere. So, you can found they are diversified in their habit, you can find them in all the niches. The nutrition in hyphae is only by absorption. They can absorb the glucose very easily and they are saprophytic. They feed on the dead decaying organic matter. As you can see here, there is something coming out body of the fungi. What is this? These are enzymes. So, these enzymes are known as zymase. Now, these zymase, they break down the complex sugar like sucrose which can be not be taken up by these small organism. So, sucrose is broken down into glucose and then the glucose is absorbed into the body. In other words, the food is absorbed by these fungi. Some of the fungi are also parasitic and can cause diseases. Yeast is a very good example of saprophytic fungi which can absorb glucose. Reproduction in them is both asexual as well as sexual. Asexual reproduction is by budding, fission and spore formation. Now, there is no uniqueness in the budding method of reproduction in fungi. A bud appears, grows in size, constriction appears and it detaches itself from the mother cells and leads a independent existence. This is what is uh, by budding. A constriction appears or a break in the body appears and the two separates from each other. Not all the fungi are useful. There are harmful fungi as well. They cause diseases. To name a few, athlete's foot, ringworm disease. You find this ringworm disease which is very common during the rainy season or due to the hot summer months. You also find that these fungi can cause harm to the plants. That for example, it causes red rust disease in wheat, which is patches on the leaves and the stem of the wheat crop, as a result of which the yield of wheat is reduced. And if this wheat, which has been contaminated by the fungi, is eaten, it can cause cancer even in human beings. Today, we have talked about the kingdom Monera, Protoctista and fungi and I hope the three kingdoms are crystal clear to you people and you can now identify the various animals that can be grouped into the three kingdoms. Thank you.